What's going on everybody? My name's Chris. Welcome to my channel. Today's new build day, okay? Pretty excited, I gotta say. I'm starting a new venture, something I've not done before. Now I do have to say I have built three acoustic guitars from scratch. I've got my fourth one in process. I built a couple of cigar box guitars, but this will be the first time I'm building an electric guitar. And the kind of guitar I decided to build was shaped like this like a Fender Telecaster, okay? So I'm building a Telecaster or T-style guitar. I've got a few things here to get started with the project, so I'll bring you on in and I'll show you what I got and then we'll get cracking. So here is the wood I need to get started. I've got a neck, it's a piece of maple, and none of this wood I bought, you know, high grade. It's all like 2A or 1A uh, because it's my first one and I didn't want to break the bank trying to build something that might not work out, okay? I could possibly fail and uh, screw something up. But uh, this is a maple neck blank. Pretty good quarter sawn wood, looking at the edge of it. And uh, it's been sitting in my humidity controlled room for a few months now, so it should be nice and acclimated. Now I've got a maple fingerboard. Now I bought this from Stumac and the description of the product says, unslotted fingerboard for guitar, maple. So when I got it, I was expecting it to be kind of like an acoustic fretboard blank. But this thing is only like six millimeters thin. So I'll be cutting the fret slots, and I'm not planning on doing a bound fretboard. I'll be cutting the slots about two and a half millimeters uh, down into the surface, which, you know, is gonna make this thing even more bendable than what it is. And then, I've decided to do a 10 inch radius. So I got a new radius block. My other one is 14 inches uh, that I use for acoustic guitars. So once I radius this thing down, it's gonna eat into the sides a little bit and it's gonna leave it quite thin on the sides. So maybe this is normal for an electric guitar, I'm not sure, but for an acoustic, what you get is something kind of like this, okay? Now this thing is almost 10 millimeters thick pretty hefty so I've got plenty of room to cut down into it and then be able to thickness from the back to get it right to the size that I want it to be whereas this one you know I don't feel like I have a whole lot of play I'm not sure what the thickness of a finished fretboard on an electric guitar is supposed to be I'll find that out once I get farther into the project I guess so I've also got this swamp ash body blank now when I bought this uh, the description said Swamp Ash Paint Grade Body Blank 2 Piece. So when I got it in the mail, I was expecting it to be two separate pieces that I would joint on the ends and then join together. Kind of like when I make acoustic guitars, I have to joint the ends of the top and the back and then join them together, glue them together, stuff like that. Well, this thing came already done. So maybe I read the description wrong, but it said two pieces, and it is two pieces, one, two. I could see the the joint there, but I guess that's a step that I get to skip. <laughs> okay, whatever, it's fine with me. But anyway, I'm already ready to go on this thing. This thing is, um, let me see how thick it is. Uh, it's an inch and seven eighths. So that's the wood I have for now, okay? I got the swamp ash body, maple fretboard, maple neck. I think that's what I need, the main parts of the wood that I need, okay? Now, for templates, instead of trying to make my own templates, I decided to go ahead and buy some pre-made templates that were CNC'd perfectly to the shape they're supposed to be, and I've got these, okay? This is by Solo Music Gear, down up in Canada. And then I've got a neck template, and then a fretboard template. It's even got all the frets marked on it, and all of the uh, fretboard dots. I'll be using these to cut everything out and route it to shape. Now the headboard, the headboard, I mean the headstock came just kind of like a random, just generic shape. I think they did this so that they give you the freedom to customize it like you want, which I just want it to look kind of like a Telecaster headstock. So I'll have to shape this a little bit, which I did on the plans that I drew out. I ended up deciding to get a pre-wired hardware kit. So I got this one off of Amazon, Alnikov, Alnikov, it says on the front, but it comes with a bridge, which I've got here, 
It's a three saddle bridge, a control cavity or a control, whatever you call it, the pickup for the neck and then the pickup that goes in the bridge. It's got a couple of knobs and a little switch to go on to the lever on the control. In addition to this, I had to buy a neck plate uh, to attach the neck on the back, a input jack, and some ferrules for the strings to go through the body. So I've got those things coming in the mail, but this is what I got for right now. Just a side note, the set I bought also comes with this other template for a double humbucker, but it's also got the neck cavity. Uh, template I guess for rounding out the cavity where the neck attaches to the body So I guess I'll be using this one too because I think a Telecaster has the neck cavity routed out So the neck can fit into it. I'm pretty sure but uh, I don't know really know what I'm talking about Now one thing I did was I took the time to draw out the plans um, I didn't buy any plans so I'm just drawing them out and I used the templates and measurements and stuff to do this So you can see I've drawn them out and I went all the way up to the headstock. And I'm not really sure how necessary they are um, at this first stage, but I felt like it'd be better if I had something that I could at least get measurements from. Um, the one thing I don't have is the side profile. I don't have the drawn out plans with the side profile of the neck thickness and the headstock and how it's supposed to th thickness out. So I'm guessing I'll figure that out as I go through the course, um, or I'll try to find some drawn out plans that I can buy that are already printed and shipped to me that I can get that from. At this point, I'm not sure. Something I forgot to mention is I did get this fret slotting template. Now, I've got the LMI fret slotting jig, which is right here, and LMI has closed down. So, I, but before they closed down, I did try to find uh, their 25 and a half inch scale template that I could buy to use with their jig that I spent a lot of money on, and they didn't have any left. So, couldn't find any anywhere else, so I ended up getting the one from Stu Mac, which is a good bit, bit more expensive. It's made out of metal. The one concern I have is the notches on the template and the pin from the LMI template. The one for the LMI template is too thick to fit in the slots. So I'm a little concerned about what I'm going to do. Um, what I'm thinking is, this thing has two sides on it. I'm thinking of taking one side and taking a file and just filing it down until it just fits inside the slots on the Stumac template. That way I'll be able to use the template and then put this pin in there and be able to cut my slots that way. I really didn't want to have to buy the Stumac template when I, I've only had this one for three years. If I had been able to see into the future, I would have bought the Stumac one, but how am I supposed to know? It is what it is. The thing I forgot to mention, since I only have a general vague idea of what I need to do to build an electric guitar, since I've only built acoustics, um, I did end up purchasing the guitar electric guitar building course from Robbie O'Brien's LutheryAcademy.com, which has Mike Snyder of Snyder Guitars teaching how to build uh, the guitars. Um, so that's going to get me through the specifics of what I need to know, and I'll be following along pretty closely with that course as I build this guitar. Just in case you want to know how I know what to do next, luthreacademy.com. So let me go ahead and get started on getting this thing down to thickness. I think I got it down to the right thickness. So now that it's at the right thickness, I think I can go ahead and put the template on it, trace everything out, cut it out, tip it back on, route it, and hope I don't chip something out. Okay. Yeah, I can't really see the center line, so I think it'll be easier if I mark that out first. There's a little bitty hole right here. It happens to be in the spot where I can route it out. So I think if I keep the template low enough, get it inside one of those pickup cavities. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Well, the battery died in my camera and the other one was dead too, so it's now the next day, 
Let's uh, get this thing cut out. I'm not really an expert at running the bandsaw, just kind of take it slow, hope not to go too far. So I got right up on the line in a couple of spots, hopefully it'll be okay. Um, if there are any gouges after I flush trim to the template, I suppose it's fine if I just sand and smooth everything out a little bit. If it's just very minor changes from the original template, I don't think it would really matter too much. I doubt anybody would even notice. So now I've got to hollow out where these cavities go. Here we go. This one got a little squirrely whenever I was trying to cut some overlapping holes. It chipped out a little bit, but luckily this scratch plate will be covering that and uh, I think it should be okay. Uh, this was not too bad and this one, um, what you saw me do on camera was not enough. I forgot I had to go a little deeper so I set it deeper and made several more cuts. Now I've got to get the template back on I think and do some routing. So I'm a little nervous about that. Hopefully I won't screw it up. We'll see. I've got this set up here with the bearing installed. I've got a bearing guided bit installed that's about got about a quarter of an inch of cutting surface and then I have this other one that's got about an inch uh, which I can take the bearings off on one side or the other to make it work how I need it to. I'm gonna go ahead and make a pass in the cavities and then make a pass around the edges <laughs> and then uh, see how it goes. I'm really nervous so I've only got it set up to take a very very small cut not much at all, maybe like an eighth of an inch. Seriously, I just want to make a small cut and see what it looks like because I'm nervous. Nothing to do but to do it. I have a router table, a little makeshift one that I made out of plywood, but it's a pain to set up and I just really don't feel like setting it up right now. And I think I'll be okay to do it this way. So let me go ahead and try not to screw this up. Alright, so looking at this, it looks pretty good. I went about an eighth of an inch down and there's no chip out anywhere on this side, so I should be okay to spin this around, do the other side, control cavity, and then just keep inching my way down until I get uh, where I gotta take this template off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll catch back up with you, okay? I made several passes and I've gone as far as I can go with this bit. I've got the router bottomed out. So I need to take the template off and then go probably as far as I can go again uh, on the sides at least. Um, I might be able to finish out these pickup cavities with just this bit. I'm going to go as far as I can and then switch out to this other bit. So let me get this template off first. There we go. Okay, check it out. I've got all the way down in these uh, pickup cavities as far as I need to go. And I've got the pickup here. I just wanted to test it. It fits pretty good in there. Now the wires on the bottom poke down a little bit. But um, I think this thing's going to have to sit up a little bit, right? I don't think it sits flat on the bottom, does it? So if that's the case, there should be plenty of room. Of course, these wires are going to go through some hole i got to drill through here at some point. Good to see that things seem to be working out. Well, I had to use three different router bits, but I got it done. 
Looks pretty good. No chip out anywhere on the edges. I mean, I've got some burning, of course, but I'll have to do a lot of sanding, no doubt. Um, the only thing that I have left to do is to go all the way down on this cavity. The bit I had that I did here wasn't long enough, and the bit I used to finish the sides doesn't have a... The other bit I used to finish the sides, I had to take one of the bearings off, and it doesn't have any plunge capability, so I can't like dig down farther without running into where the bolt goes. So This is the bit that I used to plunge into the pickup cavities. I've had this for years, but it's only like a quarter inch depth on the cutting part, but you can plunge down into wood with it on the tip. So I got a longer one so that I can do the control cavity. Uh, this one just would not reach all the way down, and I didn't want to pull the bit any farther out of the router because that would have been dangerous. So now that I've got this, basically the ex same exact bit, just longer, I should be able to get that control cavity as deep as I need to go. Well, I don't really know what to say. I guess I'm at the end of this video. This is the body blank. I was going to go ahead and do the next step, which is to put a round over. But I don't have the size round over bit I need, so I had to go ahead and order it. It's coming in the mail. Um, I like the look of the old 1950s vintage Telecasters. So, um, apparently, from what I read, those all use an eighth inch round over, right? or Fender back in the day, back in that day, used an eighth inch round over. So it gives them kind of a slab look, the way I saw somebody explain it, which I like the way it looks. I'm going to flash a picture of a 1950s Telecaster. I'm not sure if it's an authentic one or one that somebody made to look like a 1950s, but I love the way it looks, the color and everything. And it looks vintage and it has a relic look. So I like that look. So the question is, should I relic this one when I get done building it and painting it and stuff like that? So. Uh, what do you think? You can leave a comment. Um, I'm leaning towards yes, just simply because I love the way it looks. Um, at the same time, I'm leaning towards no because, oh, it's an extra step after I get done painting it. Well, I can just paint it and be done with it and have a finished guitar. Should I relic it or should I not relic it? I know it seems to be like a black and white issue. Um, people either love it or hate it. They say absolutely do it and they say absolutely you should not ever do that. You tell me, what should I do? Um, I may or may not take your advice. <laughs> I may end up in the end doing what I want to do anyway, but what do you think? It's, why is this such a black and white issue, I guess I should say. Um, but I'm really excited. Um, I'm kind of trying to compare building an electric guitar to building an acoustic guitar, because uh, I've built you know three acoustic guitars at this point, and I'm, I'm working on my fourth still. So building the body of an acoustic compared to building the body of an electric, completely different. I mean, I'm already done with this. Uh, really, I think I could be done in a day just doing this uh, body blanket. Really, it's just cutting it out and then routing it down to a template, and that's about it. Uh, so I gotta say, pretty cool, pretty cool how, how quick this goes um, so far. So I'm looking forward to moving on to the next step, which I think is gonna be working on the neck after I get the round over done. But uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, thanks for sticking around, and uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm doing back behind the scenes uh, pictures and stories and stuff about the build that you can catch up on between videos if you want to. My name on Instagram is here on the screen, CMR Wood. Uh, again, thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.